how can the straw hats become stronger? Well, today, I'll explain exactly how each and every single straw hat can move to the next level, step up, and become even more powerful. Let's spin the wheel to see from where we start. Our first straw hat today is Nami. Now, being the navigator, Nami's tasks are mostly related to navigating the ship and making sure that Zoro does not have to take care of the crew's navigation. Since, you know, bad things might happen in that case. When it comes to combat ability, Nami mostly fights with the use of her climb attack that Usopp built for her. This weapon allows her to unleash powerful lightning attacks, which, as a matter of fact, is actually one of the reasons many theories support that Nami might actually acquire the power of a devil fruit in the future. But which devil fruit exactly? You see, Oda even went ahead to answer a related question about this in an SBS. As it turns out, Nami's hypothetical devil fruit is Anel's Goro Goro no Mi. It is true that this was only mentioned in SBS. However, we did see Oda bringing SBS questions into life in later parts of the anime. For example, in some SBS, he was asked to draw Luffy as an old man, which he did, and that's exactly how Luffy looked when Bonnie used her fruit on him. Or Jinbei, that was drawn as a kid in an SBS and was later turned into one by Bonnie. Or Law, that was drawn in a gender-bent version and was later shown to be briefly turned into a woman. And the most important part, all of these instances had no impact in the story, as they were very briefly displayed, as if Oda just wanted to throw these easter eggs in the canon story simply because they were mentioned in an SBS. So yeah, even though Nami eating the Goro no Mi is not the most likely scenario, it's still a very plausible probability. This can happen by either someone cloning the Goro no Mi, or with the death of Anel, and thus this devil fruit being put back in circulation. Okay, truth be told, as we already mentioned, this is not the most convincing way Nami can power up. So, how about a more likely scenario? You see, before we explain the next power up of Nami, the best part about One Piece is the way the story is written, and the freedom Oda expresses himself with. It allows the viewer to embark in all kinds of plot developments and situations in this magical world of One Piece. Or better put, the One Piece world follows the rule, anywhere you go, magic follows. Well, that's exactly AFK Journey's motto. That's precisely why every One Piece fan will enjoy playing this game. And that's exactly why you should try it as well. This RPG game brings new innovations in the RPG game's genre. And let me tell you, this is not just an idle game, but an ethereal fantasy with distinctive visuals, intricate gameplay mechanics, and even an at a dimension with its PC-compatible side-scrolling elements. AFK Journey is now available on iOS, Android, and even on AFK Journey's official website for PC gamers. The best part? It's completely free of charge. Wrapped into the 3D canvas art world of AFK Journey, everything breathes with life. Embark on a fantasy quest as Merlin, gather heroes across six factions, and formulate winning tactics with different teams. Reunite with AFK Arena's beloved characters, and discover new ones while exploring. Discover diverse big maps, solve fun puzzles, and meet interesting interesting NPCs with effortless one-handed gameplay. Even more than that, Journey even added equipment resonance. Your resources, they literally grow while you sleep. And for limited time only, you can get 40 champions completely free of charge. And not only that, hear this. Through gradual distribution and by engaging in events with a seven-day login, players can receive over 200 free pulls. So what are you waiting for? Use code AFKJOURNEY88 or visit the link in the description down below and get 100 diamonds and 18,888 golden coins when signing up, support the channel, and have fun playing the game. Download AFK Journey today! But back to our video. You see, being a part of the crew of the future Pirate King, you would expect Nami to have, in the very least, some level of hockey mastery. And let me tell you, I don't think her abilities as a thief were randomly added in the story. Nami might have to steal something important by the end of the series. And what does hockey have to do with this? Well, by unlocking observation hockey, Nami's stealing abilities will be greatly enhanced as well, in the sense that Nami might have to locate where something is. Or even more than that, don't tell me you don't see the connection between observation hockey and being a navigator, I truly believe that if Nami is to achieve her goals, she needs to unlock, even in some degree, observation hockey. <laughs> The next character in line is Luffy's left-hand man, Sanji. Now, he has quite a few ways to become stronger. First of all, let's address his most notable weakness, which is none other than his inability to fight against women. Yeah, I get it. His whole character is revolved around protecting and not hurting women, and that is also a promise he gave to Zeph before leaving, that he would never dare hurt a woman. However, if we are to assume that Sanji is to become stronger, then deciding to, in the very least, use minimal force when faced against a woman, if necessary, to defend himself? Well, that's one great way to start, I guess. Yes, but the second way Sanji can power up is the most significant one, and the one that I believe has the most chances of sooner or later actually happening. You see, Sanji is currently left behind by Zoro on one important trait, Conqueror's Hockey. Luffy has it, Zoro has it, heck, even Yamato has it. So Sanji not yet displaying Conqueror's Hockey is definitely something Sanji needs to master, and something I strongly believe will occur soon. But what if I told you that the third power-up we have on our list for Sanji is even crazier? Hear me out. Full Germa 66 Awakening, and even a potential Lunarian Awakening. 
You see, Sanji so far displayed numerous traits resembling, or in the very least, hinting towards a Lunarian Awakening. His skin was extremely durable, enough to break even swords on impact in his fight with Queen. He can literally ignite his legs, he can even fly. Yeah, I know his type of flight is different than those of Lunarians that fly with the use of their wings, but still, Sanji being the only straw hat with the ability to fly in base form does seem intentional to me from Oda. Okay, if that happens, then I'm sure Zoro will become even more furious with Sanji. Those who know, know, but wait, because this next potential power-up for Sanji might be even more interesting. What if at the end of the day, Sanji does not awaken Conqueror's hockey? Well, it's not impossible because Oda might choose to give Sanji another hockey trait that not even Zoro will unlock, future sight. You see, Sanji being a more delicate fighter, while Zoro being more of a brute force combatant, would actually match this distinction in their fighting styles a lot, if you ask me. And finally, the fifth potential way Sanji can get stronger, a devil fruit. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't actually see this happening since, for starters, Sanji's a great swimmer, plus, while in his germa suit, Sanji had access to five different devil fruit powers, and even like that, he decided to opt out. Now, the two straw hats we analyzed were just the beginning, and the next straw hat in line... is Chopper. Let's start from his Devil Fruit. We saw that a major up for Devil Fruit users is, of course, the Devil Fruit Awakening. Now, what exactly this Devil Fruit Awakening will be and how it will make Chopper stronger still remains to be seen. However, what is certain is that it will, of course, grant a power-up to Chopper. Will he just become physically stronger? Will his Devil Fruit Awakening have something to do with his goal of curing all diseases? Maybe his Devil Fruit was the Amiodake mushroom all along. Well, I guess we'll see when the time comes. But hear me out. There are two forms of hockey that Chopper needs to learn nonetheless, both armament and observation observation hockey are very important in combat, and have great chance of being mastered eventually by Chopper, since that would be a great addition and a great help for the battles ahead. Next character in line is Frankie. If you didn't already know, Frankie has a very unique trait and a very special future in regards to the plot of One Piece. Do you remember what one of the ancient weapons is? You see, Pluton is nothing more than a ship, and what better way for Frankie to become stronger other than learning how to create this ship and actually managing to both build it and control it? As the shipwright, this fits Frankie perfectly. When it comes to fighting potency, Frankie has yet to display any form of hockey. So I suppose either armament or observation hockey, or heck, even both of them would be greatly needed for him. And listen, I do agree that a devil fruit might actually make Frankie stronger, but I don't think it would actually fit Frankie that much, since being a cyborg, he could already do some crazy stuff without needing the power of a devil fruit. Like, he could even create this special robotic subscribe button for you to click. Give it a go. Does it work as it's meant to? But if you ever wondered which straw hat needs a power up the most... Well, this is obviously Usopp, and believe me, his power-ups might just be the craziest in our list. First of all, many people claim that Elbath will be Usopp's arc, and rightfully so if you ask me. Usopp's connection with giants and how brave they are when fighting has been shown from the very first chapters of the show, so it would make sense if Usopp manages to power up in just the arc revolving around giants. How could he power up in that arc? Well, one way is to become the leader of a group of giants, hence even completing the foreshadowing of, quote, having 10,000 subordinates under his command. What if some of those subordinates are giants? Not only that, but in recent manga chapters, we are getting more and more hints about the ancient weapons, and boy, Usopp holding Uranus would be epic. Now, we don't know exactly what Uranus is, but if someone is to wield it, then I suppose Usopp is a perfect match, and a great way for Usopp to actually prove he has become a worthy and strong warrior of the sea. Additionally, similarly to our previous cases, being part of the crew of the future Pirate King, I suppose a form of hockey would be needed. Being a sniper, observation hockey would be of great help, as this would allow Usopp to aim even more effectively. What about a devil fruit then? Again, even though we cannot rule it out, I suppose the other ways we just suggested, with which Usopp can get stronger, are probably a better guess for the likes of him. The next straw hat in line is one many people forget to include as an official member. Now, we previously mentioned Frankie being able to create Pluton, right? But why would he have to create it from scratch? Why not, you know, simply modify the existing ship, aka Sunny, into becoming an ancient weapon? This is exactly the way Sunny will level up. And damn, that would be one heck of a power-up. And now we get to the long-awaited captain of the crew and protagonist of the series, Monkey D. Luffy. For him, I gathered three incredible ways he can power up, and the first of which is what everyone wonders whether it's possible for him or not. Sixth gear. Now, as we already mentioned in past videos, despite not being weak, Luffy does need to get stronger before he can reach the level of prime Goldie Roger. Plus, hear this, cars typically have five gears. However, some of them have six. Luffy so far has been shown a connection with the number 56, which can also be read as Gomu, aka his devil fruit. What if the way for Luffy to become the pirate 
favorite thing is to power up one last time and go from number five to number six, from fifth gear to sixth gear. I truly believe that Luffy has one more gear left to awaken. Now, what that will look like exactly remains to be seen, but the sure thing is that this gear will indeed be unimaginably strong. I mean, that's crazy, right? But not as crazy as Luffy awakening his Lunarian powers. You see, we previously made a video a few months back explaining all the potential clones of One Piece. One of those potential clones was Luffy as well. And why exactly do I say this? Well, for starters, we never saw his mother. We also never saw any female partners for Garp. What if Garp does not have any kids, and thus Dragon is just an adoptive son, possibly even being the son or the clone of Rox D. Shebeck? In the same way, Luffy might also be a clone of someone and just an adoptive son of Dragon. Also, remember what Luffy said when Garp told him he has a dad? Quote, I have a dad? As if Luffy is not meant to have any biological parents. What if that moment was actually a foreshadowing of Luffy not having a dad, but rather being a clone of someone? But even if this is the case, why exactly would Luffy be a Lunarian? Well, this actually ties a lot of pieces of the hidden puzzle together. First of all, the word Lunarian literally references the moon. A very popular theory states that Luffy's second dream, besides becoming the Pirate King, is going to the moon. Also, don't you find it weird that Luffy can literally ignite his fists when using Red Hawk? What if that was a foreshadowing? What if sixth gear is exactly that, meaning awakening his Lunarian powers? But hold on, because even if those two mentioned power-ups are indeed likely to happen, what if Luffy manages to actually master a power he already hinted to possess? You see, Luffy is one of the only six known characters that possesses the voice of all things. This allows Luffy to understand and potentially even speak with animals. Do you get where I'm going with this? What if Luffy learns how to speak to the Sea Kings, and thus have some of them help him in battle? Yeah, Poseidon is the one in control of the Sea Kings, but at the end of the day, we don't really know the full extent of Poseidon's powers. Maybe the voice of all things is an ability that would allow Luffy to have some Sea Kings under his command as well. If that's the case, and Luffy learns how to use this power, then that would be a huge deal. Moving on. The next straw hat in our list is none other than Brook. Now, Brook has two ways to power up. First of all, is hockey. I really doubt that Brook would acquire Conqueror's hockey, since this is available to only a few people in the entire world. When it comes to armament hockey, well, to be honest, I'm not really sure how that would work, since, you know, there's no skin or muscle for the armament hockey to be applied on in the case of Brook, leaving us with observation hockey, which is something I can definitely see happening with Brook. Now, there is one more thing that can help Brook power up, and this is obviously his Devil Fruit Awakening. You see, even though we don't know exactly what this awakening will be. Imagine being something crazy like bringing back the dead in order to fight for him. Something similar to what Yamamoto's ability is in Bankai's South Plus that would give a whole new meaning to his name, Soul King. <laughs> Up next, we have Luffy's right-hand man, Roronoa Zoro. You see, Zoro has quite a few ways to power up, five to be precise, some of which are almost certain to happen, some quite likely, and others not so likely. But still, all of them are real possibilities. Let's start from the least likely and work our way up to the most likely. You see, the standard way for a non-Devil Fruit user to power up is, of course, to eat a Devil Fruit. Now, do I see this coming true? Not so much, to be honest. But still, there are some Devil Fruits that would indeed look good on Zoro, so you never know. The second power up that Zoro may master is Fusion. Future sight. As we explained a few minutes ago, we can see this happening most probably with Sanji rather than Zoro. But once again, Zoro being a master in hockey might mean he eventually unlocks this skill as well. On to his third potential power up and the most exciting one out of the five. Have you ever wondered what is beneath Zoro's left eye? Yeah, memes aside like Renegon, Sharingan, and such, Zoro probably hides something under that eye. But what exactly is it? Could it be something related to the Death Reaper that almost took his life in Wano? Could there be a connection with his nickname, King of Hell? Maybe. But the fact that we don't even get a single mention of it probably means that Oda plans to reveal something or some power that has to do with it later on. Even though what we just mentioned has good chances of coming out true, the next way Zoro can power up is even more likely. And what way is that? Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. You see, the elite among the elite characters in One Piece showed a level of hockey that is even more powerful. Zoro, having already used Conqueror's Hockey, his next power up might be the use of Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. And finally, something that I consider close to 100% of coming true, Zoro turning his blade black. You see, we don't really know the conditions that need to be met in order for this to happen, but we do know that this is an incredibly rare skill, so rare that only Ryuma and Mihawk managed to turn their blades black. If Zoro is to overcome Mihawk, then I believe it's fair to say that in the very least, he needs to turn his own sword black as well. 
The next straw hat in our list, Nico Robin. For Robin, we have three ways that she can power up. The first is obviously a Devil Fruit Awakening. Now here I would like to explain that despite common belief, Robin has yet to awaken her Devil Fruit. When she does, even though we're not 100% sure what that's gonna look like, the sure thing is that it's gonna be an important step towards leveling up for Robin. Now the next thing that Robin lacks and definitely needs is some hockey. You see, when attacking by using her Devil Fruit power, many times she grows body parts on opponents. That leaves her vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. That's exactly why I believe Robin will eventually unlock Armament Hockey. Even more than that, although the two power-ups we mentioned for Robin are more likely to happen, there is also the possibility for her to awaken Observation Hockey as well. And finally, we reach the last straw hat, Jinbei. Now, normally, for non-Devil Fruit users, we say that them eating Devil Fruit is most of the times a possible power-up. However, for Jinbei, that would be the complete opposite. You see, being a fish man, Jinbei is at his strongest while being in water. Him eating a Devil Fruit, no matter how strong that would be, would cause him to not be able to swim, taking away his strongest weapon. Now, when it comes to hockey, Jinbei can currently use both armament and observation hockey. A potential power-up, though, for him would be Conqueror's Hockey. Even though in the anime it is fight against who's who, we saw the characteristic effects of Conqueror's Hockey. It's still not explicitly stated or confirmed whether Jinbei has Conqueror's Hockey or not. So I guess if he's yet to use Conqueror's Hockey, a great way to power him up would be to unlock this skill. However, something else that I believe would be great with his Fishman Karate would be the addition of Ryuo Hockey. Jinbei never used this skill, and if he ever does, that would be a major power up. Check out this video, where we present 25 times that One Piece characters became memes. Go on, check it out!